Welcome to the fourth episode in our series, The 3D Experience Platform Explained. Lately, there's been a lot of hype from Dassault Systems about a concept called Power Buy. I've seen a lot of good presentations on this topic, but I wanted to do a hands-on and really take a look under the hood at Power Buy. Let's start by defining a new tab. We'll call it Product Engineering. I'm going to drag and drop the Product Structure Explorer widget onto my new tab. This widget is in fact two separate widgets, the Structure Explorer and Katia 3D Compose. These two widgets go hand in hand. With a simple search, I'll look for a product that I already stored on the platform, the excavator. I'm going to drag and drop it into the Product Explorer. The structure gets loaded and the 3D graphics get loaded into 3D Compose. I'm now going to search for some other parts of the assembly and bring those into the Product Structure Explorer. Here I can see that the boom and arm assembly originated in Katia P5. Regardless of the source CAD, I can bring it into the Product Explorer. As we can see, the structure gets added into the Product Structure Explorer and the graphics get added. Let's look for one more part and drop it into our assembly, positioning it based off the current CAD position. Now, using the 6w tag function, let's take a look at where our various CAD files originated. Here we see that we have parts from three different CAD systems, regardless of their source, they can all be viewed in one scene. This in and of itself is a very powerful capability. We can now mash up assemblies that might have come from suppliers or even departments, each using their own CAD system. Also using the 6w tags, we can color the assembly and parts based off of their release date, or for that matter, any other attribute in the system. Here we see three different release dates and can very quickly gauge the completion state of our product. 3D Compose has many tools for selecting parts or assemblies. One of the more useful tools is the level selector that we see here. Directly from the interface, we have access to an interactive lifecycle flow that enables us to change the state of the parts based upon our authorizations. Now we will see a very powerful capability. Regardless of CAD source, we can now create our own assemblies inside the product structure editor just by dragging and dropping the parts and sub-assemblies into the structure. Here we are adding the SOLIDWORKS and CATIA V5 components into what was a CATIA 3D experience structure, thereby making a hybrid structure, as we can see here by looking at the properties of the boom and arm that the source CAD definition is maintained. Next, we'll use some of the simple drag and drop tools available to position the boom and arm correctly on the CATIA 3D experience assembly. As you can see, it's once again simple drag and drop. Snapping tools are available. For more accurate positioning, the assembly can be opened in CAD. This positioning is maintained and respected evening when opening in the CAD system. Looking at some of the basic functionality of the widget, we can see that cross highlighting is available as is multi select of parts using the control select key. Cross highlighting works from both directions. There are numerous tools available for focusing on a specific part, either in the 3D graphic or in the tree. Now we will take a look at what happens when we open our new hybrid assembly in CATIA 3D Experience. Selecting the top level, we'll first we'll load CATIA 3D Experience and we'll see that regardless of CAD source, the complete assembly is loaded. Also, we see that the positioning changes made have been respected. If we look at the feature tree, we see that parts that were designed in CATIA V5 cannot be edited here. However, parts that were designed in this CAD system have their full features defined and can be edited. This enables us to design in context regardless of the source CAD. Back on the platform, another very nice functionality of the Product Structure Explorer is the search capability. Here we can see that all instances of our search term are highlighted and can be stepped through. Next, we're going to look at a change scenario enabled through Power BI. We're going to select the boon and the arm, which are currently released, and create a new revision of the assembly. As we can see here, the new revision is automatically added to the Product Structure Explorer. It has the B.1 designation and is placed in the work state. We have the ability to update some of the attributes as we can see here, adding in a description or changing the name. Using the available tools, we can quickly swap out the prior revision for the new revision in our hybrid assembly. The assembly is updated and we can now review, remove the duplicate reference from Product Structure Explorer. 
In our scenario, we will be changing the size of the bucket. Let's take a quick look at the current bucket. We can zoom straight to the bucket and using the available tools, we can measure its width. The snapping tools allow us to easily measure from one surface to another. Manipulation of the assembly inside 3D Compose is simple and very easy. We are now beginning to understand why this is called Power By. Before we can make changes to the bucket, we want to create a change action. To enable this, I'm going to add the change action widget directly to my tab. It's easy to create a new change action. Give it a name, description, severity, a due date. The change action is quickly created for us. Now that we have a new change action, let's add a team of people to work on it. There are four roles available, owner, assignees, reviewers, and followers. Before the change action can be completed and the parts released, the reviewers must sign off on the changes. The next step is to add in the parts that are going to change. Here, we select the bucket that is currently in the release state. By dragging and dropping it into the proposed change tab, we can quickly add in parts that are changing. Depending on the reason for change selected here, the state of the part will be promoted accordingly. We have selected change for revision which means that a new revision of our part will be created. We can also add in context, meaning parts and assemblies that come along for the ride but are not affected by the change. This is useful to provide context for our parts when designing. Finally, we move the change action into the work state. As we see here, under Realize Changes, this creates a new revision of the part and places it in the work state. Now, as a designer on the platform, I have access to the change action exactly as it was defined. All the relevant information is available here. I'm going to search for the bucket and find the latest revision of the bucket, as we see here in the properties. With drag and drop from the search results, I can load it into the Product Structure Explorer. I'll now update the system to define that all changes to this part are being governed by a change action. This will also prevent anyone else from making modifications to the bucket outside of the change action. Next, we'll edit the bucket by opening it in the CAD package it was created in, in this case, Katia V5. This we can do directly from the platform. As we can see here, I have full editing capability. Even inside Katia, I can see that I'm currently working under a change action. In this case, I'm going to make a quick edit to a parameter and change the width of the bucket. We refresh the graphics and can now save our changes directly to the platform through the integration. As we see here, the bucket has changed and will be saved to the platform. Back on the platform, we've refreshed the view in 3D Compose and can now verify the change by measuring the width again. As we see here, the bucket has been successfully updated. I can now move the bucket to the frozen state to prevent any more changes to it. Its promotion to the release state will be governed by the completion of the change action. Before we can complete the change action, it has to be assigned to some reviewers. Therefore, it must go through a review state where the assignees will have to approve and sign off on the changes. Once all approvers have signed off, the bucket will be released and the change action completed. The last action required to, is to update the assembly with the latest revision of the bucket. As we saw before, this is an easy task of swapping the current revision with the latest. Our assembly now has the modified bigger bucket. Since we have several versions of the bucket, we may want to review the differences. For that, we have the compare widget that we see here. I can drag and drop the boom and arm assembly into the compare widget. It instantly shows me all available revisions of the assembly. In this case, we have only one change. However, we can easily step through and understand what changed. Attribute comparison is also supported as we see here. As we have seen, regardless which CAD you are using, the Power By enables you to continue using that CAD. No more CAD translations are required in order to build an assembly from multiple sources. The product engineer can work in one place validating designs and building a product visually. 
This ends our fourth episode of Hawk Ridge's 3D Experience Explained series.